Thank you so much, Mike. So Ben, I'll hand it over to you. All right, thanks, Steve. So thanks everyone for coming out tonight. Make sure I'm good, all right. Um, to our Alpine pre-competition webinar. Um, so we're gonna go over a few things tonight um, and then we'll have questions at the end. So this is just the agenda for tonight. We'll go through a welcome, which we just did, uh, COVID protocol schedule, uh, facility maps and layouts, escort procedure review, helmet process, rules and coaching during competition. We'll uh, go over some family and spectator information, uh, weather and attire. And then, like I said, at the end, we'll have a Q&A. So the purpose of tonight's meeting, one second, just trying to let Matt on in, um, is uh, to share the information with the Alpine coaches relating to winter games this year. It's also to share plans related to winter games as, they're, as they currently stand, because um, as you all know, um, things have changed so frequently um, that everything is really fluid as of late, uh, especially dealing with COVID. Um, highlight key changes and key issues that we are, are dealing with or that we may deal with, uh, provide information to coaches in a more actionable time frame, and then of course the team and putting feedback from our delegations and, um, just to see what we can do better uh, for this year and years to come. So uh, COVID protocols. So uh, SOMD's COVID protocols are a little bit different um, than uh, Whitetail's COVID protocols. Um, so for instance, uh, on-site screening is not required um, for SOMD. Masks aren't required for vaccinated participants. Um, this is, distancing is still recommended. Uh, we still wanna do the, the six feet if we can. Um, that may be hard in some instances, but we're gonna try. Um, there are no restrictions on meals when looking at SOMD. And then non-delegation members are not permitted in delegation spaces. Um, now that's a little bit uh, different. Second, um, so it differs for whitetail. Uh, masks are required indoors uh, when indoors for whitetails, except when engaging in eating or drinking. Um, masks are not required outdoors, um, but if you're indoors for anything, even just going to the restroom, you have to have your mask on for whitetail. Um, Transactions for whitetail are going to be cashless, and proof of fully vaccinated uh, of being fully vaccinated uh, is required um, to go into any open area serving food. This does not apply to the marketplace, but this does apply to the solstice. I mean, I'm sorry. This does apply to the marketplace, and it does not apply to the sol the solstice restaurant, uh, which is closed anyway. Yeah, and just a few things there um, to piggyback on what Ben was talking about is. Um, the big thing here is the non-delegation members are not permitted in delegation spaces. Um, knowing that there will be some more families coming up for finals this uh, Monday. Um, so be checking people at the door. Um, so just let your families know that when you're upstairs hanging out in your, in your space like we did at time trials in the game, um, that that is restricted to delegation, um, officially registered delegation members, people that have their credential basically. So um, families can go outside, do whatever, but um, that upstairs solstice room and the side room um, is all restricted to delegation members, um, management personnel, et cetera. Um, the other thing with the masks is as coaches, um, if you could um, continue to monitor the athletes and coaches as well, um, I know on uh, time trials weekend, I was going around constantly reminding people, you know, if you're not eating, put your mask on, put your mask on. So um, the reason for that is not, it's, it's number one, health and safety, but primarily it's because whitetails rules. If they have people coming up and doing cleaning and get reports, if they're not wearing masks upstairs, um, I will hear about it. So really um, appreciate your cooperation and your diligence there to, to monitor that situation. Thank you, Steve. Um, so uh, the check-in process for um, winter games. Uh, well, firstly, an updated Alpine delegation roster will be sent to the ADs and head coaches no later than uh, Friday, February 25th. And this will also include events and scheduled uh, division start times. Uh, as far as checking uh, the check-in process, head coaches must check in um, 
on Monday, uh, beginning at 8 a.m. That would be head coaches only. Um, the control center will be in the sol upper solstice room, uh, just like it was for time trials. Um, so um, if you're not familiar with it, it, it's just pretty much following the um, following the arrows that we have, um, like we did for time trials. Um, it's very easy to find. Uh, the bibs will be included in the package and will be labeled with uh, skiers' names and events. Um, please return any unused tickets to the control center by one o'clock at the latest, um, if you can. Um, and then when looking at parking, please only park in the, the public parking areas and obey the signs from Whitetail. Uh, we really don't want to have uh, any issues and anyone getting told or ticketed um, out there at Whitetail. All right, so Alpine competition. So this is our tentative schedule. Um, in, in addition to the tentative competition schedule on the right, which you can see, um, delegations once again will check in uh, at 8 a.m. There will be a brief uh, opening ceremony. This opening ceremony will be roughly 15 minutes, um, nothing very, very long, um, like we've done uh, with a couple other events through the COVID. And then Alpine head coaches meeting will be roughly at uh, 9, 10, um, and that shouldn't take longer than 15 minutes either. Um, this is a tentative schedule and it is under review by the Alpine sports management team. Um, so it could change. And if it were to change, we would let you guys know as soon as possible. Um, the novice giant slalom is currently not uh, definitely set to be offered. Um, so that is something that we're still uh, working uh, with the GMT team. Um, it really depends availability and the capacity of, of course, setting personnel. Um, so we will update you guys when we have a final decision on that. Uh, however, the glide and the super glide will be offered. Um, time trials uh, will be on the super glide course. Super glide competition will uh, immediately follow the time trials and the course will be reset and glide competition will then be conducted. So this is, um, like I stated earlier, our, our schedule as of now. I'm not going to hit every single thing, but just some key points. Um, so of course, volunteer and delegation check-in will, will both be at 8 a.m. Um, we'll have the coaches meeting. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We'll have the brief opening ceremony at 9 a.m. Like I stated earlier, 9, 10 will be the coaches meeting. Um, and then competition will start roughly at 10 a.m. Uh, lunch will be offered at 12 to 145, depending uh, when athletes will be uh, competing. Um, and then we will conclude the event roughly at 5 p.m. And like I stated earlier, um, the head coaches meeting is scheduled to be that Monday morning at 9, 10. It will be um, at the tent near the equipment rental building. Once again, this will only be about a 15 minute uh, meeting, very brief, um, just to go over some key points for the day um, and then get everyone on the slopes. Then here's kind of the, the brief um, general overview of, of Whitetail and what we're looking at for Monday. Um, if you look up here, the opening ceremony, again, it'll be very brief. Um, it'll be the national anthem, maybe a few oaths and then get right into competition. Um, so that will take place um, right on the backside of the lodge, kind of where we've typically done it. Um, but right, if you walk through the breezeway coming up the stairs, going on, it's going to be on the backside of the lodge, looking up to the mountainside. Um, the awards area will also be over kind of the same place it's been in the past, um, but we will have staging inside the pizzeria that is not open to the public. That's where they've done the, um, um, awards preparation results. We will also have a tent outside. Um, depending on how congested and crowded that gets, we may move out to the um, to the tent. So just be uh, ready to be uh, ready to adapt to that. Uh, but the awards area will be the same place it's been as far as the presentation of the, the medals and ribbons um, up against that elevated ski um, area right there, um, right outside the pizzeria on the main deck area, right behind the lodge, right. If you could see through this building right on the back side there. Um, here's where we're uh, doing our control center. Like Ben said, same place as we had at time trials. Um, that's where you access that stairs to come upside or up the side of the, the lodge right into the room. 
um, dining, same thing. We'll have the two locations, the upper level of the lodge, as well as the solstice room for delegations to hang out, um, eat their meals, et cetera, while wearing masks if you're not eating. Um, this is the restricted parking lot, and this is primarily for uh, whitetail staff. Um, I know the handicapped um, spaces get uh, used up quickly, so um, need to check that. If you have anybody coming up, just let them know, either get there really early or be prepared to be dropped off, and then somebody else could go park the car in one of the designated parking areas. Um, just as an FYI, the snowshoeing competition, right now, fingers crossed, um, that we'll be able to use the tubing park. And again, you follow the signs down to the tubing park. Um, in a backup situation, we will be able to use the Mountain Ops building where they were trading um, when you guys were having your time trials. <clears throat> and then these are kind of the, the slopes, again, anticipated slopes that uh, we'll be using from uh, Matt and Kathy and Jared and the rest of the um, Alpine crew. So the Super GB on Sidewinder. And Matt, uh, step in if, if I make a mistake here. Um, slalom courses will be on Snow Park. The Novice will be on Velvet. And then the Glide and Super Glide will be that right there at the base of Velvet. Uh, the same place we've done it in previous years, but um, it's just the, the one course coming right down to, to the base of the Lodge. I mean, those, yeah. are the those are the anticipated courses pending weather and everything else, but Whitetail is um, thinking they're gonna be fine. So Matt, you, anything you wanna add on that? Yeah, we're gonna be in the same locations we were for the training and time trials. We're gonna be below Park Place on the skiers left along that tree line. Uh, it does have a, a nice little pitch to it and we can, has a nice turn. So that gives us the ability to set a challenging course for both intermediate and advanced athletes. As Steve and Ben mentioned, COVID is really, uh, taking a toll on everything across the board. Our Alpine GMT team, typically we have around 40 GMT members that are at games. Uh, we're looking at about 17 or 18, and that is course setters and course officials that are gonna be at games. So we're, we're doing what we can to get as many courses as we, we can set. We're gonna, uh, Mike and Steve did a great job working with me in regards to trying to come up with a good schedule of events so we can get things set, get things moving, get things going. Um, my only ask to everyone is please be patient because just as your delegations, SOMD staff, everyone is uh, shorthanded when it comes to having uh, the folks to get everything the way we've had in previous years. Just be patient with our Alpine team as we get things set and we try and run these courses as efficiently as possible. Great, thank you, Matt. Um, and we didn't mention this earlier, but you guys, all coaches and everybody on the call, we'll get a copy of the slide decks as, as typically done. So um, with that, here's just a uh, take the map out. And now it's just the, the basics there for the courses that are anticipated to be used. And then um, I don't know, Matt or George, um, if you want to talk about the um, escorts and, and updates there on the process. No real updates. This is uh, this is the change we made a couple of years ago. It went extremely well. Um, any of the uh, coaches with experience that were here two years ago, uh, again, it went extremely well. Any of the new coaches, just uh, follow these steps. Stay with your athletes. Get them to their courses. Stay with them through awards, and uh, it should go very smooth. So I'm going to talk real about coaching uh, athletes as escorts, just like any other time you are, you're permitted to coach your athlete. If you're escorting your athlete or escorting another athlete, you can give them advice when you're on the ski lift, as you're going to the, to the race course. But once the athlete enters the race course, once they cross that th threshold. Now, when we talk about the race course, it's not just the gates. What we want to do to make it consistent is, once they enter the race course itself, that's where we want to see any coaching to stop. The officials are going to be working with the athletes to get them in the correct order, to get them going, getting up to the start line or the start wand and get them going. So reminder, do not, as soon as all the way up to when they enter the orange tape, 
from the outs outside of the course. You can talk to them once they enter the course, encouraging uh, statements only. Anything to add there, Steve? Nope, you're good. Okay. So I, ju I just covered that as well. Kind of got ahead of us there. Sorry yep, about you're that. Yep, you're good. You're <laughs> good. So same thing. This is just some specific instances. Um, you want to avoid statements such as uh, turn right, turn left, uh, cheering statements, you know, go, go, go is it, that's okay. Cause that's what the officials are going to be saying at the start line. You want to avoid right, left. However, you also want to avoid calling out commands at a cadence. Our officials will have spotters all the way throughout the course. And if a coach is calling out a cadence that their athlete is listening to, to, to make their turns, that will be flagged as a potential DQ. If you have any questions as far as uh, what can or can't be said, if you grab me or I would suggest ask the course official at the course or come and find me at any time. And as we talked about, um, you know, the, uh, the, the consequences of coaching, we don't want to see any, uh, any, any athlete be disqualified. I mean, that is the ultimate. So please be aware of what you're saying, what you're doing. Um, as uh, for the person who did the coaching, they will be asked to leave the race course. And if it continues, SOMD personnel will make the decision to have them uh, request them to leave the event itself. And then on the other thing, I think Matt hit on it, but just to, to reemphasize it, um, as far as any instructional commands or like Matt was saying, cadence, um, please let your family members know um, so that they don't cause an inadvertent disqualification as well. So again, we want to make it the fair, the fair competition for the athletes and partners. And uh, we don't, like Matt said, you know, one of the things we don't ever want to do is disqualify an athlete. But if we have to, we will. So we just look for your help as coaches to get that word out to um, other individuals that may be spectating. <clears throat> and again, basically, we just talked about that. So right. just, just reemphasize um, to everyone that's in attendance so that, that those situations don't arise. Um, so awards and um, the flows and results and things like that. So. Um, as a delegation, as coaches, if you could have someone dedicated um, down by the awards area um, for meeting the athletes after the presentations have been made, that would be very helpful. I know on occasion we have some athletes looking around like, where's my coach or where do I go now? Um, so uh, we look for your assistance there. Um, like I said, it will be down in that pizzeria area, um, but the same presentation location will be. There will also be a 10 by 20 tent up by one of the staircases that um, can also be used for staging or preparation with the trays and the medals and ribbons. Um, but what we ask you guys is, you know, once they come into the staging area, um, for coaches and family members, et cetera, to, to get out of that area so our people can get the athletes ready, get them staged, get them ready for the presentation, and then march out and receive the rewards. Um, the posting of those results will be in the same place they've been in the past on that back side of the pizzeria restaurant where the windows are, um, where our timing crew will be posting those as they as they are printing them up, getting ready for the awards presentations. <clears throat> and then with the awards flow, again, as we were talking about with the escorts, um, the escorts, once the, the, the final runs have been made, uh, will be bringing the athletes down to that staging area for awards. And what we look for is to uh, make sure that the athletes come directly there so that we're not waiting or delaying any of the award presentations for um, an athlete who's waiting. Now, obviously, if there's an emergency or something like that, fine. Um, but we look to have those full divisions come in together so that we can check off and make sure everyone's there. And then we can move forward and uh, get the presentations done in a timely manner. So, um, again, we look for your assistance there. Um, as we mentioned, don't um, come in um, to the areas unless there's a request for, for you. So that's why we need you in the area. If there's a situation that arises, regardless of what it may be, where a coach from a certain county program is needed, um, one of the volunteers or Anna McCauley, the director of awards, will come out for Alpine. 
um, to look for that individual to come help address the situation that's occurring. So um, don't crowd around the entrance again um, as we continue to develop how our process is going to work and where the best place to have staging is. Um, the more people gathering around a certain door area uh, makes it more difficult for um, the process to occur. So uh, we'd like, like to keep that as, as little congested as possible. So again, we appreciate your cooperation there. <clears throat> Protest, I think I'm turning it over to you, Ben. Yes, sir. Um, so for protests, uh, protest forms will be available upon request uh, by head coaches only. Um, they must be uh, filed 30 minutes following the, pro, uh, the posting of the results or they will be automatically denied. Um, and once they are filed, uh, the Alpine committee will meet um, to address the protest itself. Uh, afterwards, they will make a, we will make a decision um, and then we will let head coaches know of that decision. One thing that's not on here and, and I think in the five or six years since I've been back, we've only had one appeal. But just so everyone knows, there is an appeal process. If the protest is denied from the Alpine Committee and you wish to appeal that decision, it can go to the Games Rules Committee. Um, most likely that takes about 48 hours, um, depending on when that appeal is, is filed, um, to get the crew together to make a decision. But um, we will continue to <clears throat> um, notify you of that situation. Um, Matt, you want to add something there? Yeah, I just want to thank all the coaches one thing we started saying about four or five years ago is you know do not be afraid to submit a protest we want to get this right we've had and i know this is going to sound odd we've had more protests in you know the previous three years than we had had in the previous five years combined and you know we want that we want to get this right a protest doesn't mean that you're upset about something or you're angry about something if it, it, it's a question, you want to, we want to make sure we get this right. So please submit, if, if there's a question, if there's something that's not, uh, not really uh, aligning properly, submit a protest. That'll give myself, Kathy, Neil, Steve, Mike, give us all a chance to look at it over and make sure we get it right. Yeah. I can't emphasize that enough. And that's, um, excuse me, well stated, Matt, that you know, it's your job as a coach to advocate for your athletes. If you think an injustice has been done or a question mark call or something like that, it's we're not going to take offense or hold grudges against you if you file a protest. You're advocating for your athletes. That's your job as a coach. Unless it's uh, Mr. Bird, we may have a, hold a little grudge there. But um, no, seriously, as Matt said, that's your job as coaches to advocate for your athletes. So um, it's the process is there for a reason. Not everyone's perfect, including Matt and Kathy. Um, and the rest of the Alpine crew, mistakes can be made. So that's why the, the process is there. Hey, Steve, it's George. Question. Yep. You mentioned the um, appeal to the games committee. What's the deadline on uh, initiating that? Um, that needs to be, and basically you'll just, um, it'll be on the same kind of form and you can just put appeal, scratch out protest and put appeal. Um, we need that, you know, as soon as possible after the, the protest is denied, um, but definitely before you leave the games. Um, no the, the standard is two hours after the yeah. decision of the, uh, of the sports rules committee is made. Yeah, so once... Thanks, we didn't put it on here, but yeah, it's two hours. Yeah, okay. so it's, like you said, you know, by the time you get the results get posted, you file the protest, the decision's made, um, it'll be right towards the end of games, but... Um, you know, we'll work with you a little bit, but that's a standard practice. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Good question, George. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Ben. Um, so rental forms uh, are required for all skiers, um, and they will be uh, given to head coaches at, at the check-in at 8 a.m. It's being a coach's package. Um, if you have any that are unused, um, please return them to the control center uh, no later than 1 p.m. That is what we're asking. Uh, we would hope that this is uh, this runs pretty smooth because it's the same process that we did do at uh, at time trials, so it should be uh, pretty familiar to to most of the people that will be here today. I mean, on Monday, lift tickets are available for head coaches um, at check in as well. Same thing. Um, if you have any unused, please get them back to the control center by one p.m. 
Yeah, and again, we're meeting, we have our games management team meeting tomorrow night, which will confirm some of the processes, but I think it'll be a lot less traffic on Monday than we had during the weekend at time trials. But as you can see what Whitetail did with us, um, with the equipment rental lines and the lift ticket lines, uh, would not have been fun to be in that line. So again, Whitetail, we're, we're hoping that that same process will be in place, but regardless, I think uh, by the time people get there and it being on a Monday versus a weekend, we should be good to go. So uh, waivers, this is uh, something new for Whitetail. Um, so areas have been notified of individuals who need to uh, complete the bail property waivers. Um, so either if you didn't uh, send them in to the uh, to HQ uh, via email, or if you were not at the time trials to fill them out in person, um, we still will have to have everyone fill those out um, prior to um, beginning the event on Monday. Uh, so thank you to each of you that did submit the wa uh, waivers at time trials. So you won't have to do it again. But if you did not, um, or if you weren't present at time trials, this is something that we we do uh, have we have to get done for uh, for white tail and bail properties. Uh, individuals who do not uh, complete this required waiver and have the head of delegation or head coach turn it in to the control center before the opening ceremony will be removed from competition. Unfortunately. Right. Process. So um, no one will be allowed to uh, ski giant slalom or uh, super G courses without the proper uh, certified helmet. Um, there are no exceptions to this rule. Um, we will at time trials. We did do the uh, helmet inspection where you'll get the uh, little sticker um, that says SOMD that pretty much uh, shows uh, that you are uh, that you do have the proper helmet um, for a winter game. So prior to warmups, um, send athletes and partners and coaches up to the helmet check area. That would be on the second floor of the lodge. Um, uh, I think Steve may have touched on this earlier, but um, we did do this at time trials. Um, so I'm thinking that the majority of the, the athletes uh, should already have their stickers, but if not, this should not be a long process. Uh, it doesn't take long to just check the, uh, the helmet, get the sticker uh, and get you guys on the slopes. Um, they will receive the SOMB sticker, like I just stated, uh, and this process did take place at time trials. Uh, so like one more time, shouldn't take too long. Yeah, and I think um, there was, um, if, if I know a couple years ago, we used the big green sticker. We've now moved to the smaller um, gray or silver sticker. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you, those coaches, if you could check your helmets, um, there's a little space on that. If you can use a black Sharpie or red Sharpie or whatever, and put your county name or county abbreviation on that. The reason for that is in case a helmet gets left behind or lost or whatever, we know who to go after. Say, hey, we have one of your helmets here um, in case anything's left behind. So I tried to mark them all when I was doing the inspection at time trials, but I know maybe a few slipped through, uh, but that's the reason why we want to mark in case something comes up missing, we can return it to the right one. And then I think it's back to you, Matt, with uh, Alpine Rules. Not to go, not a whole lot to go over here. I mean, everyone is pretty familiar with the rules. Um, you know, gloves, goggles. Uh, one, of the, I always want to like to pay attention to the goggles because we do have from time to time athletes show up at the race course in strapped sunglasses. So if they do show up with uh, with sunglasses on and not the appropriate goggles. Um, they will not be permitted to race. If there are questions about the equipment, if you have questions about the goggles, see a course official before your athlete shows up for competition. Ask the question, get it clarified so they're not showing up at competition with the incorrect, uh, incorrect equipment. I'm not going to touch, you know, there's uh, a lot of other elements here. Um, uh, Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. I want to make sure that we can, uh, I want to touch on the two minute rule real quick. Um, the timed runs, two we are going to do two timed runs just like a, a regular competition. So um, please follow the normal processes for that. If um, Super G, just to touch on that, it, Super G is a, uh, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. The Super G is going to have one timed run. The first one is a practice run only. So what we ask is 
Don't spend a lot of time worrying about times or anything like that. Have your athletes go through the first time as a practice run, get them back together, get them back up to the start. So that way we can keep the course, uh, the course competition running smoothly. Uh, glide and super glide, one, one run each. Um, Charles. Here we can go to the next slide. Uh, no, no changes here. Race procedure for hearing impaired athletes. Uh, officials will hold up their hand and give the uh, hand gestures in regards to the timing. Um, if they do have the ability to, to sign, they will communicate with the athlete uh, appropriately in the same manner they do with all other athletes. Next slide, please. So this one is a little um, a little different. As you know, we, you know, coaches are not allowed, not permitted to be on the course. However, if you do have a visually impaired skier, again, make sure that uh, your athlete is registered and identified as having, uh, as having a visual impairment and that their coach will be skiing in front of them as part of the race. Some on snow tips. Um, hopefully, uh, we won't be wearing um, shorts and t-shirts when we're skiing on Sunday. But as always, when it's even when it's warmer out, that's a lot of a lot of folks forget to make sure that their uh, athletes are hydrated or have proper sunscreen. So make sure you go through this uh, this checklist. Understand what medications they need. Have a good understanding of your athlete and know, know the schedule so they can stay properly hydrated, get lunch on time, and be ready to be out on the snow. Same thing, clothing, uh, layers, know your athlete, their diet, hydration, hydration, hydration. Can't say more about that. And then any special needs or equipment, make sure they're, you're familiar with your athlete. So accident procedures. Steve, would you like to uh, go through this one? Yep, I can do that. My, um, so basically, you know, if there's an injury or an accident or whatever, um, the ski patroller is going to be our first call on the mountain. If something happens outside of the mountain in the in the lodge, and we will have medical personnel on site. Anyone who has a radio will be able to radio them. Um, but don't remove the equipment or move the the person if there's a major injury um, or unless they're in immediate danger. But um, I think we all know um, health and safety and the courses you've taken through Special Olympics and coaching is um, let's let the medical personnel do that and not make any injury worse by moving them or trying to relocate them if they're not in immediate danger. Um, so, you know, that those are kind of the basic things. There is an incident report. Um, so if it's not somebody you're familiar with, we want to collect their name, address, phone numbers, that kind of stuff, any witness statements we can have um, for insurance purposes and otherwise. And then, like we said, wait for the medical team from the ski patrol to be there or uh, one of our other medicals um, to take down that information using our forms. Um, if you're not familiar with the form, all coaches should be able to have or should have access to that through your area directors. Um, very good to have on site at all times for any training practice or um, event of this nature, whether it, uh, something happens on the way to Whitetail, at Whitetail, or on the way home. Um, so again, any incident that does occur, please let us know at the control center so that we're aware and do, can do any follow-up as needed. And again, here's just some other information as far as the accident or incident report. Um, that is information that can be filled out in that form. Just the more detail we have, um, the better um, or, or, or not as much follow-up may be needed from the insurance company or our staff here at the headquarters that um, we'll follow up um, with any of the incidents that occurred. But yeah, the more information we have, the better. The more you can include, the better. Steve, if we can hold for a second. Matt, you had referenced the one minute rule. I'm not sure why, but somehow that was not included in the slides uh, here. Um, let me. Uh, share this. Yeah, I know you had said you particularly wanted to cover that. So uh, I went to 
the um, that, to the event guide from 2019 and yeah. pulled this up if that would help. Yeah, and, and this is why I want to bring up, thank you, Mike, I got kind of on a tangent there. Yeah. Um, Cause it used to be the two minute rule. It was changed to a one minute rule in certain, except for novice. So novice still has a two minute rule that is in place. Uh, all of the competitions, it is a one minute rule. So if an athlete misses a gate, loses a ski, they will have one minute to get themselves together, get back through and continue through the course. That one minute resets at the next fall. But if an athlete is continuing to have challenges getting through the course, our spotters or course officials can make the determination to have that athlete uh, ski down next to the course and not, not complete that race. So thank you, Mike. I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not, it, uh, it wasn't in the, um, the slides from last year either. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I knew you wanted to touch on it. So. Steve, you can go back and share your stuff again. We'll include the text of this in the email that goes out with the slides, uh, folks, okay? Great. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Matt. And back to you, Ben. Um, so lunch, uh, lunch will be provided uh, the same way it was um, during time trials. Uh, so we got the uh, sandwiches from Jersey Mike's. Um, so at the specific times, um, once lunches are all pretty much division themselves uh, into each delegation, like we did at time trials, um, when athletes are not um, are not uh, competing, uh, they'll be able to come up and get their lunches, uh, as well as coaches and delegation members as well. And just to reiterate it, um, I hope everyone knows, but similarly, um, as Matt indicated, a lot of um, businesses, companies, et cetera, are hit with the COVID. Um, situation with staffing. So this is not something we did on our own to go away from whitetail lunches. Um, they actually asked us if you guys could help with our staffing um, and have another forum to get meals. Um, they supported us, encouraged us to do this. So um, in future years, uh, we'll be going back to whitetail um, and going through the lines and, and be able to uh, partake in the marketplace and their lunches there. So this is just a short-term fix as Vail Properties and Whitetail um, get their staffing back up. So um, there we go. And then Ben, back to you. Thanks, Steve. Um, so families and spectators. Uh, spectators will be on their own this year. I know in the past um, they got walking passes, but there are no walking passes this year. Uh, spectators will need to prepare to be distanced from athletes, coaches, and delegation members. Um, so it's kind of like that social distancing thing. Uh, we also don't want them to interfere with the, the uh, competition itself. Um, so just be mindful of that. There is no family hospitality area this year at all. Uh, spectator uh, space is somewhat limited. Um, that's more of an issue uh, being narrow along the course. Um, so just be mindful of that. If you've been to Whitetail before, I'm sure you're uh, already familiar with that. And then uh, families and non-delegation members need to be prepared that uh, they most likely will have or will not have access to the delegation areas for hanging out. Uh, um, I'm sure we didn't put that on there, but, um, you know, it, I thought it was on there, actually, sorry. But um, if uh, families or, or spectators are going to be coming, you may want to bring a, a chair just to sit in um, in case that there isn't space uh, at Whitetail. Conditions update. So both uh, SOMD staff and the uh, GMT team are, are working closely with Whitetail on the conditions. Um, so uh, of course, um, like you all probably know, um, uh, Whitetail has to create snow um, for the slopes. Um, so we always are constantly watching uh, the weather just to make sure that um, it is safe and that the slopes are gonna be good to go um, for Monday. The course change, course change decisions will be made Sunday and communicated Monday morning at the head uh, coaches meeting at 9, 10 a.m. So if there are any changes, we will let you all know. No, let's go back to what I just said. So um, attire, weather, and hydration. Uh, the weather is being updated constantly. Uh, so please be prepared for all conditions. Um, so it can be a little bit warmer sometimes, like it was uh, time trial. Some, some of the day it was pretty warm. 
um, but it can also be very cold and this is a winter sport. So just, you know, be, be conscious of that. If you are out there and it does, the temperature does drop, you want to make sure that your athletes have the proper attire on. Uh, um, for Monday is listed here. Um, please make sure individuals stay hydrated. Uh, so whether that is Gatorade or, or water, just make sure that uh, athletes, coaches and delegation members, everyone is staying hydrated. Um, and layers are ideal to add or remove as the weather is unpredictable, like I just stated. And as far as the hydration goes, um, we will have some additional water available outside of the one water bottle um, that uh, will go with lunch. But um, if you have other products you'd like to bring as far as um, you know, sports drinks or whatever, um, just know that you can bring those um, at a very limited quantity or you could purchase those either in the marketplace showing your VAX card or one of the outside, uh, the grill area. I think they have some things like that, but um, we got one or two requests. And just want to address that for, uh, from at time trials. Thank you, Steve. Um, so additional information, medical, uh, like Steve already stated, uh, at Whitetail for, uh, for Alpine, you ski patrol for all medical issues. There's also a walk-in clinic uh, for injuries. Uh, located uh, at Whitetail Med at the Whitetail Medical Center. Uh, that is the far building. It is a lower level by the ski school. Um, so if you do not know how to get there and there is a medical emergency or you need to go there, please look to um, the SOMB staff or course officials uh, who can point you in that direction. And I, I think most people are familiar with it. If you've been there before, but um, it's basically if you're going, if you're walking towards the equipment rental building, you keep going past that a little bit, take a left. Um, that takes you by the, the yurt and then where the adaptive school or ski program is. And you walk down those steps and it's um, at the lower level of the big building um, right there. So, but again, um, whitetail personnel, anybody can direct you in that, uh, to that location if need be. Miscellaneous. Um, so this is an evaluation uh, survey. Um, we do it every year. Um, so it's the same thing that we've done in the past. Um, it will close midnight uh, on March 13th. Um, so please have uh, everyone from your delegation fill out the survey. It really does help us um, for the next years on what we can improve on to do better. Um, and it really, it just, it's constructive criticism and it's, it's good feedback for us. Um, so please have everyone fill that out. Yeah, and I'll reiterate the point that, that I have over the years is this is not what we want to have is we want to have true feedback from coaches, athletes, family members, anybody who was in attendance at the event, a management team members, staff, et cetera. Um, the one thing is when you have additional comments or things of that nature, um, if there are things that went well, um, please indicate that or let us know. I can't tell you how many events I've done where typically everyone, you know, checks a box and then the comments are, well, this wasn't good. This wasn't good. And all we get is the negative feedback. And so then we change it. And next year, the following year, people say, why the heck did you change that? That went great last year. Um, so it's not to get pats on the back. It's to have a balance. So we know what we can improve upon. If there's a con, you know, if there's, you know, one or two people had a bad experience regarding one thing, we look to change that, but 85 people had a great experience um, and didn't want it changed. Let us know the good and the, the things that we can improve upon. Um, but it's really important um, to, to shoot this uh, link out to everyone from your delegation and your county programs so that the more responses we get back, the better information we have um, in order to plan for future events. Um, and these are just some links to some additional resources as well as the uh, coaches resource page, uh, Special Olympics International SOMD website and USSA website. Last uh, slide is questions and more info. So um, for Alpine, of course, I'm the sports director over uh, Alpine skiing. Um, and then Ryan is the sports director over snowshoeing. Um, so if you guys ever have any questions or for some reason me or Ryan aren't getting back to you, you could always email um, uh, Melissa Anger and she'll get that information to us as well. Um, but for Alpine specifically, um, everything should go through me pretty much. Um, and if you have any questions, just don't hesitate to ask. Um, and if I don't know the answer, then I'll go to Mike and Steve and I'll figure it out.
thank you guys for tonight. Um, and if you guys have any questions, now is the time to ask. I, I got a quick question for you. Two things, actually. I noticed uh, with a lot of the schedules, there was maybe an hour for course inspection, but it didn't show any time for practice. Will the athletes actually get to practice or take a practice run before the competition? Well, that is entirely up to you based on the schedule. If you have uh, it, knowing your athletes when they have to be, you know, that's, that's just when course inspection is going to generally be ready. It's not going to be, it's typically an hour, 30 to 45 minutes to an hour before competition. Some, um, uh, in the, the way we're setting up our courses this year, uh, we've kind of got to set some up earlier than the competition's going to be because the amount of effort it takes to get there. So if, your athlete is not competing until the afternoon, by all means, they can take some practice runs. They just cannot go on the course because once the course is set, it is no, no longer, uh, once the course is set, it's only open for course inspection only. If an official sees that your athlete is skiing the course, that will constitute, um, uh, that will constitute a d disqualification. So, so they, can, okay, they can practice but they can't run the courses. So they can't run the course at all? Nope. Okay. Uh, one other question. Um, I know you mentioned two runs for most of the events, except for the glide and super glide. Is that two runs also in effect for the novice slalom? Or yeah, novice slalom is two runs. So they, they have to complete two runs? Yes. Gotcha, okay. That's, those are my questions, I, thank you. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Uh, when the slalom, uh, where you have two uh, runs, is it the combined times or is it best time? I believe it's the combined times. Uh, it's been, this is where I get to be in two yes, years. Yes, you are correct. It is, it is combined. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the so helmet you need to have, just to clarify, Larry and others, they have to have two successful runs uh, in order to uh, to not be disqualified. So, um, but yeah, unlike the Super G where uh, the first run is a practice run, it may not even be timed at all. They have one run on the Super G uh, and then also same for the Glide Super Glide. Okay, uh, more questions. The helmet check, uh, I know we didn't do it but we didn't even see where it was done when we had practice up there. Uh, all Larry, of our athletes ha have the proper helmets. Yeah, Larry, that was um, because it was a modified course. It wasn't required at time trials, but I was up walking around and trying to get all the coaches um, so that we could get an inspection to make sure. But um, do you know if any of your helmets do not have the little spray uh, sticker on them? Uh, I don't even know what color it is. Okay. Yeah. If, if uh, they have the big, if they have I, I know the big, they had it done uh, uh, two years ago. Yeah. If it was the big green one, we want to, we want to uh, replace it with a little silver or gray one. Um, so that, that can all be done up there uh, once everyone gets checked in in the upper level of the control center or the solstice room. Uh, okay. We'll put those stickers there. So as a coach, just say, hey, um, I've got a few comments here. I just want to confirm that they're ready to go. We'll take a look at them. Okay, next question. Uh, will you be using paper tickets or cards for lift tickets? We anticipate it being just like time trials. It will be the paper tickets and not the swipe cards. Okay, so you don't need the names of who gets them? No, right. we, just need a, we just need the number that you need for your... For your Okay, our head coach for skiing will be in California that day, and we may, yeah, you know, I probably, I will probably be doing snowshoeing, so possibly Lee Herman will be acting as the head coach. Is Your head okay? coach is a, is a brand new granddad or a relatively brand new granddad, so let's give him the props. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, but who will also get to probably ski heavenly or something like that. Uh, let me see, there was one other question. Uh, 
When will we know about the location of the snowshoeing? That's a question relating to parking <laughs> for yeah. the snowshoers. Yeah, we we won't necessarily know till um, Thursday or so, but we are anticipating that it will be at tubing at the tubing park, um, unless you hear otherwise. Um, okay. April, um, has been saying that snow conditions are good. They've been able to make a little bit, and then this weekend it's anticipated. Um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that mm -hmm. make it, but all indicators right now are that we'll be at the tubing park. Okay, great. That's my questions. <laughs> Good deal. Thank you, Larry. Um, anybody else have any questions? I haven't been checking the chat. Um, Mike, have you been checking that? Uh, yes, uh, other than just a moment ago. Yeah, I haven't seen anything at all in the chat. I don't see any hands up either. Thank you. Um, with that, as Ben said, thank you guys. Um, obviously, we're still not back to a typical scenario um, with the pandemic and with the shortcomings of staffing and everything else, not only from a volunteer perspective, but from Whitetail. Um, I know the challenges you as coaches have gone through over the last two years, as well as the county programs and all the other sports. Um, but you know, through the cooperation and with your efforts, with the efforts of, of your, your county leadership, the efforts here from Jim Schmutz, our leader at the headquarters, other staff members, management team members, et cetera. Um, we are one of the leaders in the country in being able to offer events uh, to the athletes where a lot of other programs were not able to offer anything to the athletes. So um, again, we're not back to normal. Um, hopefully we'll get there soon. But in the meantime, really, really thank you guys for giving the athletes the opportunity to train, um, come up here and to compete in what you do. I know many of you wear multiple hats throughout the year and coaching different sports. So uh, without you guys in the forefront of, of supporting the athletes, um, none of this is, is possible. So um, we, we truly appreciate your efforts. And as we work our way back to normalcy, um, as Matt said, please be patient um, with us. We're all in this together for the good of the athletes. So uh, one quick question, Steve. Uh, yep. Will the athletes uh, and their partner, whoever brings them back, uh, be able to use the uh, uh, ski school line if they're yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're we're hoping to do that as well. Again, I think the lines will be a lot less on a Monday, but um, we're, we are working with Whitetail. We'll get confirmation on that tomorrow. But I think all indicators are that um, Special Olympics, anybody who's wearing a bib, whether it's a management coach, uh, number for a racer, will be able to use the, the ski school line as well as um, the equipment rental line to the, to the ski schools, just like we did at time trials. Great. Okay. And again, if anything changes from what I've said, um, we can give you updates there at the coaches meeting. But again, Whitetails work their tail off to make it happen for us as well. So they're gonna do everything in their power to make it easy, easier for us uh, uh, than others. So it's, it's a great partnership we have. Thank you, Larry. Okay. And well, with, that being, with that being said, again, as we said at time trials, make sure you uh, reach out, um, take the opportunity to thank Whitetail staff as well, um, being understaffed and overworked and, and making all this possible for us. We want to recognize them, their efforts and our partnership with them to continue that for years to come. So again, um, I think that's it. So we will say thank you all. Look forward to a great winter games. So glad to be able to have it this year. Um, so appreciate you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.